Heavenly Father, I will say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for who you continue to be, Father, we are exalted. Lord, we come in tonight's meeting into your hands. Lord, grant us access to wisdom, to understanding. Give us a deeper understanding of your word. Understanding. A deeper, a clearer understanding. We make a demand for clarity, direction. Open our eyes of understanding. 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 Open our ears to hear your voice clearly. We make a demand for a quickening spirit, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of wisdom in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, we commit tonight into your hands. Teach us your word. Open our eyes. Grant us access. Give us a deeper revelation knowledge. Deeper revelation knowledge. Deeper revelation knowledge. Deeper revelation knowledge of your word, O oh God. We decree tonight that, Lord, your throne will be established in our hearts. Your kingdom will be established, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Is there anyone who might be coming in tonight with any form of sickness or affliction or whatsoever that it would decree their healing is established in the name of Jesus? The Bible says he sent forth his word, and his word healeth them and delivereth them from their destruction. I decree every sickness is healed tonight in the name of Jesus. I decree healing to every heart tonight in the name of Jesus. I decree direction. Holy Spirit, have your way. Teach us your word tonight. Holy Spirit, let your presence invade every home. Let your presence invade every heart. Let your presence saturate our homes. Let your presence saturate our heart. Holy Spirit, have your way, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Good evening once again. Um, our topic tonight is um, thirsty for more. Thirsty for more or desperate for more. You know, um, we're going to be reading through the Bible reading. Why we read, we pray. Please follow me. And please, and I want you to follow me with a hungry and desperate heart. As we get into the word, we pray. As we study, we pray. So I have a couple of references. Most likely, this is going to be a series because I have a lot of references, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to cover them up so that we can pray. So um, I want us to open to the book of John, to the book of John chapter 4. From verse 7 to 35, book of John. John chapter 4. The book of John chapter 4. Our topic says thirsty for more or desperate for more. But I prefer to use the word thirsty, thirsty for more. Um, John chapter Four, verse seven to thirty-five. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, "Give me a drink. Give me to drink." For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, "How is it that?" Thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which I, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw, to draw with, and the well is deep from hands, then hast thou that living water. Hast thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank Thereof himself and his children 
and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, because the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I may, that, that I thirst not, neither come either to draw. I want to, I want to pause there. While I was preparing for tonight's meeting, the first question that came to me from verse 7, verse 7 says, There cometh a woman of Samaritan to draw water. Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. Brethren, the word of God also connotes water. The word of God represents water. The Bible says in the same book of John, it says, sanctify them by thy word because thy word is truth. The word of God signifies, can also be represented as water. It said, thou art cleansed by the word that I've spoken to you. The woman came to draw water the same way every one of us, we have come tonight to draw from the well of salvation. Verse 16, <clears throat> verse 15, where I stopped. Verse 15 says, the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I might thirst not, neither come here to draw. When Jesus began to tell the woman, this kind of water that never finishes. He says, verse 14 says, but whoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up everlasting life. He said, out of thy belly, shall flow rivers of the living water. Jesus was on a journey with his disciples. But Jesus diverted that journey and went to that well in Samaria all because of one person. And let's read for that so I don't go ahead of myself. Verse 16 says, Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband and come here. Either. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou as well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou not, him whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that said thou truly. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet, and our fathers worshipped in this mountain. And ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Wow. <laughs> Brethren, when I got to this point and I continued to read further, I realized that a man. <laughs> Jesus began to give prophetic word. And the woman began to perceive that. And the woman said, oh, with all you are telling me, you know so much about me. You must be a prophet. But <clears throat> I realized <laughs> that the main objective, the main goal of Jesus coming to that well was not to give prophecy. The main goal of Jesus coming to that well was not to, to give bread and butter. 
The main goal of Jesus, you see, while I, like I said, while I was meditating and preparing for this, I realized that a man can be gifted. But if that man or that servant of God does not pay close attention, I'm going to repeat that again. If that servant of God does not pay close attention, you will begin to lose the, the, the burden, the burden of God for your assignment. You see, a man can be gifted. And, and you see, gift as a way of manipulating an assignment. Because if you get too compassionate, or you allow passion to engrave you. You know, there's a level you get to in your ministration when you minister as a, as a servant or as a minister that the gift can just interrupt. It can, int just like we just saw now, the gift interrupted that discussion. The gift of prophecy interrupted that discussion. And the woman thought, oh, I've met a man, he's a prophet. But she didn't know the intention of the man of God. So I just wanted to say that, that as we journey in this walk with God, we must not allow the gift to divert our attention from the original intent of God. The original intention, the objective, the goal, the vision, because gift can manipulate if one doesn't pay attention. I read further. Verse 21. Jesus said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye. Let me please. This King James trying to throw me off. Let me use NLT. I'm going to read from verse 22 now. You Samaritans know very little about the one you worship, while we Jews know all about him. For salvation comes from the Jews, but the time is coming. Indeed, it's here now. When true worshipers, we worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. Brethren, if you read King James Version, King James Version used the word, the father is seeking. The father is seeking for those who will engage their spirit in sincerity to worship God. So in this verse, we see the true meaning of worship. That worship is not just in songs. Worship is not just in melody. Worship is straight from the heart. The heart posture. So meaning a person can be right even in the bathroom and yet not singing. Yet the person is still worshiping to God. You can be on your job. You can be working on your job right in front of your com on your computer, and yet your heart is what is worshiping God, because the Lord God is searching for those who will see, who will worship Him in spirit and in truth, and that is why it's very important as children of God to engage our spirit at all times. And there's no way we can engage this spirit without the word of God. There's no way we can engage this spirit without prayer. The same way a person can have muscle. But you see, if the person doesn't exercise, the muscle will not wake up. The muscle will not show. The muscle hides on that body fat. But as the person becomes consistent in exercise, you will see the muscle begins to grow. You will see the muscle begin to reflect the same way the spirit is. You see, let me use an example of Apostle Osai. 
a baby who is in a womb has the eyes, has the, has the whole body form, has hands, has nose, has a mouth. He or she, they have everything. But until the baby is born, until the baby is born, none of those things can be active. They are living, but it can be active. The same way a person can be filled with the Holy Ghost, yet the Holy Ghost in them is not active. When I saw that place, that God is searching, looking for those, meaning God is searching because many, look at what I said recently. Think about this. If David could disclose to us in the book of Psalm 51, that take not the Holy Spirit away from me, what makes you think that God was not willing to reveal the Holy Spirit to some people in the Old Testament. But unfortunately, some of them couldn't just have it. They couldn't just dig deeper to that level. Because if one person would have access, the same way Enoch could be taken that Enoch never died, the same way Elijah experienced the same thing, what I'm trying to tell you is if one, if God can give access of the Holy Spirit to one person, I can bet you God is also willing to give us access of the Holy Spirit to many who are willing to dig deep. What am I trying to say in summary? If God is searching for those who will seek him, who will worship him in spirit and in truth, in sincerity, and that is why in this journey, the art posture, the, you see, I said something recently at the Garden of the Eagles. I used the word, whom seeketh thou? What do you seek the most? You see, this question I'm asking you, this question has broken me down many times. I'll be sincere with you. Many times I've thought about my financial status. I've thought about my ambition, many things I want to achieve. But in my question for many of these things, the Holy Spirit will come quietly. Remember Matthew 6.33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and every other thing shall be added. My son, I know what you need. I know your ambition. I know your desires. But are you willing to seek me first? Are you willing to seek me first? What seekest thou? What do you seek first? What is your greatest desire? Do you know that a person can be in the ministry, in the ministry, in this work of God, even a believer, and what you desire is not really God. What you desire is to, is to use God to get fame for yourself. Not really God himself. One of the prayer that we're going to pray tonight that has always been my greatest prayer. I had this prayer 2013 from Apostle Suleiman. Not Apostle Selman. Apostle Suleiman. Apostle Johnson, Suleiman, God, give me you. You are all I desire. Give me you, oh God. Give me you, because according to the book of John, chapter 3, book of John, chapter 1, verse 3, he said, in him was everything created, and nothing was created without him. Give me you, oh God. Give me you. Brethren, thirsty for more. What are you thirsty for? What is your greatest thirst? I began to, a few minutes before we started tonight, Holy Spirit said, check the meaning of dehydration. And I, when I began to check the meaning of it, 
I realized that the loss of water in the body. And I realized that when you lose too much of water in your body, according to the research I did, you get extremely very weak. It leads to, it leads to confusion. Then it also leads to brain damage when it becomes extreme. And Holy Spirit said, exactly the same way. When you begin to lose the word of God, when you begin to lose your hunger and thirst for me, life become weak. Life become conf confusion set in. You can't think straight. Why? Because something, something is going down. Something, something is going down. Let's read further. Verse 24. For God is a spirit. So those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman said, I know the Messiah is coming. The one who is called Christ. When he comes, he will explain everything to us. Can you see that? Oh my God. The same Messiah. Oh my God. Oh my God. The same Messiah that they have heard about, that they are waiting for. The same Messiah stood before her, yet she couldn't discern it. Yet she couldn't know it. <laughs> oh my God. Brethren, this is a serious prayer. I want us to pray and tell the Lord. You see, many have walked into a very contagious, contagious presence of God. But because they came to that presence with, what shall we eat? They came to that presence with mundane needs. I don't need important. Yes, yes, they are important. But you see, I said something at, I went to go minister at our youth vigil recently. And that was last month. And Holy Spirit opened my eyes to something. No, it was at the Bible study. And Holy Spirit said, do you know the reason why the Bible says, when men says there's a casting down, we shall say there's a lifting up. The Bible says, let, let the weak say what? They are strong. <laughs> Brethren, did you know the reason why David was saying things that are not normal to Goliath? David looked at a man over nine feet, and yet this guy was speaking things that are not logical. Did you know the reason why Caleb and Joshua, they went to the promised land and all they saw they saw giant giant and you know what they call them they said this ones they are bread for us yet the ten the ten they were saying the real thing the ten told Moses they said this one they are too they are too they are too huge to conquer see, in this kingdom, the moment you give your life to Christ, you have been translated into a covenant relationship. In this covenant relationship, you don't speak what you see. You speak what the word of God is saying. You don't speak what you see. You speak what the word is saying. That was why. Joshua and Caleb were the only two that escaped death. In this kingdom, brethren, you don't speak what you see. Say faith. Faith is not in what you see. Brethren, please, I want you to pay attention to what I'm saying. Verse. Twenty-six. Then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Just then, his disciples came back. They were shocked to find them talking to a woman. But none of them. Verse 
verse 27. Jesus then, Jesus then, his disciples came back. They were shocked to find, you know what, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit keep interrupting me. Holy Spirit said, this verse 26, even when Jesus said, 26 says, then Jesus, then Jesus told her, I am the Messiah. Guess what? Yet, yet, she did not get it. <laughs> oh my God. Why? Her understanding was not open. Brethren, I want us to pray. I want us to tell the Lord, Lord, open my eyes, oh God. Lord, may I not be blind in the season of my life when you show up. This was a season of visitation. Brethren, if not for the mercy of God, this woman would have missed a season. God has visited many people but many people lost that visitation because we were not discerning. We couldn't discern that this was God. We couldn't discern the, the voice of the Spirit. We couldn't discern the communication of the Spirit. Brethren, I want us to pray and tell the Lord, Lord, open my eyes, O oh God. Open, open my understanding, oh God. Prayer in the name of Jesus, my Lord and my God. Lord, open my eyes, Lord. 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 Open my understanding. 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 Open my understanding, Lord. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. I want us to pray and tell the Lord, Lord, open these eyes that I may begin to see. Open these ears that I may begin to hear clearly. Brethren, you see, in this journey, oh my God. <laughs> I was playing a video of a song, a music minister called Minister GUC to my twin, I believe on a Monday or so when she came to my house. He was as it was in his studio rehearsing a song. And this guy says some deep things that the Holy Spirit has been ministering to me lately. He said, do you know that even your passion, your passion can mislead you? <laughs> Brethren, we need the help of God every day. I'm telling you. You see, if God, and that's why it's very important to stay, you must stay long in the secret place if you want to last long. If you and I will last long in this journey, last long that I meant, I'm not talking about age. I'm not talking about ministry. I'm talking of last long of not losing God. The only way we can last long not to lose the voice of God or not to lose God is to stay more. Tarry in his presence. Did you remember what Jesus told them in Acts chapter 1? He said, tarry, go to Jerusalem. Tarry there. He never gave them the time the Holy Spirit will come. He said the Holy Ghost will visit you. He will come. but stay. You must stay there. You must stay there. The same Peter that couldn't do much. He couldn't do much when Jesus was alive. When the Holy Ghost came, the Bible says the shadow, the shadow of Peter was healing the sick. Too much, too many things was happening through a fisherman, a common man. Why? They waited in the secret place. Brethren, I want us to pray. Lord, Open his eyes, oh God. 
search this heart of mine, oh God. Dig out whatsoever is in this heart. Brethren, remember where we read in this same chapter, it said the Lord is looking for those who will worship him in spirit and in truth. My question to you tonight is, is your heart truly naked before God tonight? Are you, have you brought everything out to him? Is there something within your heart that you have told him or someone is talking to you as a lady and you know this guy with this story? You know this person is not born again. You know you're about to fall into fornication, yet you are not saying so. You are not naked and telling him, God, I'm dying. I'm dying. I'm losing my own girl, oh God. Lord, I'm about to fall. Lord, I'm losing it, oh God. Save me, oh God. Save me, oh God. Rescue me, oh God. Brethren, it's a moment of honesty. It's a moment this woman almost lost, missed a season of visitation. Jesus came face to face. She had, if, see, it's a different thing if she doesn't know history. This woman knew history. She told Jesus, they told us the Messiah, his name is called Christ. He will come. Yet, Christ was in front of her. And yet, she didn't believe it. She only saw him as a prophet. Brethren, I want us to pray. Lord, open up my understanding. Lord, open up this understanding, O oh God. Lord, search this heart, O oh God. Rip out, rip out. Was so, read them out whatsoever that is not of God, O oh God. Lord, search my heart, O oh God. Lord, lay your hand upon me. Open up my understanding. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, open up my understanding. 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 Open up, Lord. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Verse 27 says, verse 27 says, Jesus then, his disciples came back. They were shocked to find him talking to a woman. But none of them had the nerve to ask, what do you want with her? Or why are you talking to her? The woman left a water jar beside the well and ran back to the village, telling everyone, come see a man who told me everything I ever did. Could it possibly be the Messiah? She wasn't even sure. She wasn't even sure. Verse 30. So the people came streaming from the village to see him. Meanwhile, the disciples were urging Jesus, Rabbi, eat something. But Jesus replied, I had a kind of food you know nothing, <clears throat> you know nothing about. Excuse me. Verse 33. Did someone bring him food while we were gone? The disciples asked each other. Then Jesus explained, My nourishment comes from doing the will of God who sent me. And from finishing his work, brethren, <laughs> what is your thirst? What are you hungry for? What is your greatest desire? What is your greatest hunger? What do you hungry the most? Whom seekest thou? What do you seek the most? If they put on priority now, in all sincerity, that you should, you should name what you need the most between one to five or one to three. Name three things you need the most right now. Will Jesus be part of it? After Apostle Paul has worked with God for 30 years or 33 years, this man was still asking that I may know him. 
that I may know him. The Bible says Anna the prophetess was in the temple for 87 years praying that Jesus the Messiah might come that I may know him. Jesus here was telling us that there are different kind of food. The question I bring to you aside from our natural food what other things do you crave for? What do you crave for? What is your crave, your greatest craving? Don't forget, we are not perfect, but it's very important to strip this heart before God. Because if what we crave for or desire the most is completely outside God's will, it will lead to danger. Look at what Jesus Christ said said, my food is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish it. Not just to start. Ah, oh my God. Oh my God. You see, this verse, it gets me very emotional. It brings me to tears a lot in my secret place or in church. Lord, help me to finish well. Lord, help me. You see, it's beyond I'm a born again. It's beyond God has raised the dead through me. But look at Moses, a man who God spoke to face to face, face to face, yet he disappointed God. God killed him. God told him to go to the mountain and die there. Brethren, Solomon, the wisest man, God visit. <laughs> Go and check the whole Bible. I don't think any other person received gifts like that in the dream, like Solomon. In the whole Bible, in the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, Solomon was the only person that received impartation of the most, most <laughs> ever recorded gifts in the Bible. A man woke up, received impartation in the dream, and became the, the wisest man ever. Yet, that same man, he disappointed God. I was sharing on Tuesday here. The Bible says, and Solomon loved the Lord and a sacrifice. Guess what? The same craving he had, that love, the Bible says in the same Old Testament, and Solomon loved strange woman. Brethren, you see, the same, the same food. Jesus was saying that there are two different kind of food. The same way you can have passion. Passion can also lead one astray if it's not guided. Desires can lead one astray if one is not guided. Brethren, what is your greatest craving? What do you crave for? I want us to pray and tell the Lord, Lord, help me to finish well. Lord, please help me to finish well. Lord, please, I, I beg of you. Lord, help me. You see, and now we are talking about finishing well. Holy Spirit, just ask me now, have you even started at all? Have you even started at all? Have you discovered your assignment at all? Let me read that verse again so that you can understand. From verse 20, 20, 34, 34, then Jesus explained, my nourishment, which is my food, comes from doing the will of God who sent me and from finishing his work. Listen to the reason. You know the same. Four months between planting and harvest. But I say, wake up. Look around. The fields are ready ripe for harvest. Ah, Jesus came all the way from where he was. You need to go and watch that movie, The Chosen, and see how many miles they walk before Jesus Christ. He diverted his own journey and he came to that Samaria. I didn't finish that, that series yet. He came to that Samaria because of this lady. Why? 
because the harvest season that was the harvest season for that lady that was a visitation moment i've said it i said this in the garden of the eagles for august brethren last two weeks holy spirit was still telling me the same thing i'm begging you brethren be sensitive to time and season hmm. i'll say it again don't be everywhere when you are supposed to be in the secret place. The Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that there is time and season for everything. Don't, don't be enjoying when you are supposed to be saving. Discern your time. Don't, don't be lavishing your time when you are supposed to be planting your time and investing your time to prepare for the future. Dr. Mike Murdoch, we say, you can predict the future of a man by how he invests his time. Please, I beg you, discern your time and season. Discern your time and season. Think about it. Please well, just whisper this to me now. If Jesus, the Messiah, the Messiah, the Messiah, Messiah, Messiah God, he left everything and he went to that well. That well was in the desert. That place, look, if you watch that movie, The Seasons, or The Season, the cho and I, I kept calling it, someone is not correcting me, The Chosen, rather. I kept calling it The Season. The movie is called The Chosen. It's on YouTube. If you look at that location they used, it was as if the well was in the desert. If Jesus could have left everything to go for one soul, you know why? Because Jesus needed, that lady needed the well. She needed that hunger to reach out to her generation. She needed that hunger. Brethren, if you and I will reach out to the lost generation or to our own generation, you need to be refilled. You need your hunger to be quickened. You need to be replenished. That one lady, she brought the whole city to Jesus. Brethren, please, I'm begging you. Discern your time and season. <laughs> a time is coming. Mark, read my lips. A time is coming. You will desire to do so much with your time with the constraint. I will say it again. You don't have kids now. You are not married. My relationship. Invest now. Invest, use your time now. Use, invest your time. Serve God now. Serve Him with all your strength now. Because a time will come. You will have the will, the zeal to serve God. But you can't do it. Because the body, the bones are weak. The bones are weak. You can't run like you used to run again. You can't fast that, like the way you will desire to fast. Because... Age has catch up. Do what you can now. Do what you can now. Invest now. Build yourself now. Build yourself now. Because a time we have you seen an Olympic candidate who didn't prepare? You know you have a competition ahead of you. And yet, no preparation. What do you think is going to happen to such a candidate? You know you have the calling of God. You know God wants to use you to invent a great business. God wants to, maybe God has showed you that I'm going to give you a global business. And yet, you have not read anything on business. You have not read a book on business. You have no research. The, 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 the largest millionaire, I said the largest, um, the least of the millionaires or billionaires around the world. You have not read their biographies. Brethren, discern your time that season. Discern your time that season. Die now so that you can live. Let's move into the 
nitty gritty. Let's open our Bible to the book of Psalm 42 from verse 1 to 4. Psalm 42 from verse 1 to 4. We're going to continue because we have another speaker. We're going to be happening over very soon. We're going to continue on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Psalm 42. From verse 1 to 4. As the deer longed for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for God, the living God. When can I go? And stand before him. <clears throat> Day and night. I have only tears for food. While my enemies continually taunt me. Saying. Where is this God of yours? Oh my God. As the deer. Verse 1. Longs for stream of water. So I long for you. O oh God. I kept asking God today, God, what do you want us to talk about? God, reveal the burden of your heart. And as the burden come, as the burden came upon me while I was at work, my heart broke. When God visits me sometimes, I will be, my heart will be so sober, like someone has passed away, like as if someone died. And the Holy Spirit began to say, say, my son, there are many people they have lost their hunger. Many people are at the point they are very weak right now. They, they are at the edge of falling into sin. Look at David asking God. He said, my soul, as the deer longs for the stream of water, so I long for you, O God. I thirst for you. I want us to pray. I don't know what you are longing for. I don't know what you, you have been longing for. I don't know what your greatest desire is. I don't know what you are chasing. But please, let me help you chase him. Let your longing, let him, 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 the word, the living word, let him become your first priority. I want us to pray from that verse one. It says, so I long for you, O God, that Lord, let my soul long for you. Let my soul thirst for you. Lord, my thirst is going down. Lord, let my soul thirst. Have you seen a man who is thirsty before? A man who is thirsty is a desperate man. When you see a man who is hungry and desperate, who is thirsty for God, you can tell. You can tell. You will know that this one, nothing can satisfy him. Dr. Polenete sang a song. There is a place my heart can't for Lord. There is a place I am longing for. It is a place where deep calls to the deep. Oh my God. Reverend, I want us to pray. Lord, let my soul plant after you. Something is dying within me. Let my soul begin to plant after you. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God. Let my soul begin to plant after you. Let my soul begin to pant after you. Let my soul begin to thirst for you, God. Let my soul begin to thirst for you, Lord. Let my soul begin to thirst for you, O God. Let my soul begin to thirst for you, O God. Lord, let my soul begin to thirst. 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 Begin to thirst after you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray. Verse 2 says, My soul tested for God, for the living God. 
when shall I come and appear before you? Verse 7, the same chapter, he says, Deep calleth unto the deep at the noise of thy water sprouts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. I want us to pray, Lord, take me deeper. Lord, take me deeper. My life, I feel so shallow right now. Lord, take me deeper. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Deeper, oh God. Deeper, oh God. Deeper, Lord. 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 Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Deeper, oh God. 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 Deeper, Lord. Deeper, Lord. Deeper, Lord. Deeper, Lord. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take me deeper in my walk with you, in my prayer life, in my study life. Take me deeper, 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 deeper. Take me 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 deeper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray that prayer once again and tell the Lord, Lord, in your infinite mercy, in your mercy, oh God, Lord, please take me deeper. Lord, take me deeper. I need more of you. Lord, take me deeper. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God. Lord, take me deeper. Take me deeper. Deeper, oh God. 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 Deeper, Lord. Deeper, Lord. Deeper, Lord. Deeper, Lord. Deeper, Lord. Take me deeper. Take me deeper. Take my wife deeper. Take our children deeper. Take faith and desire deeper. Take them deeper. Take them deeper. Take them deeper. Take me 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 deeper. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray. I sense in my spirit that some people have lost their hunger. Do you know that being when, you're, when our responsibilities increases, either as a family person, either as a career person, either as a student, do you know it, all, of, all of these things I just mentioned, they have the capacity to reduce your hunger and thirst for God. Because everything in the kingdom is time constrained. It's time. I want us to pray and tell the Lord, Lord, restore my thirst and hunger for you, God. Lord, restore my thirst and hunger for you, Lord. Prayer in the name of Jesus. Lord, restore my thirst and hunger for you. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. Restore my thirst and hunger. Restore, O oh God. 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 Restore my thirst and hunger for you. Restore my thirst and hunger for you. Restore my thirst and hunger for you. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. Restore my thirst and hunger. Restore, O God. 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 Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. Restore, Lord. My hunger and thirst for you. 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 Restore, 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 restore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
I want us to pray that whatsoever is injuring my hunger for God, whatsoever has been replaced that I am now hungry for. Remember what Jesus Christ said when we read? He said, my food. They, they brought physical food to him. The disciples went to go buy food. But Jesus Christ was telling them, there is another food that you don't know. <laughs> there is another food. Brethren, the question is, what is your food tonight? What are you craving for? What has replaced the food for God? Because either you believe it, you see, we are not in the middle. If you are not craving for God, you are craving for something else. Some people crave for attention. Some people crave for fame. Some people crave for fashion. Some people crave for many things. I want us to pray. Lord, whatsoever has replaced my hunger for you, Lord, let them be rooted out. The Bible says in the book of Matthew 15, 13, it says, every tree my father has not planted, they shall be rooted out. Lord, whatsoever has replaced my hunger for you, whatsoever, oh my God, brethren, I want us to pray. Every spirit of lust, every spirit, every spirit of, see, ambition, ambition can replace God. Ambition. Even your love, your love for your partner. If your partner become a God that you don't have time for God again, or you are always on the phone, always on the phone. Ah, you are looking for trouble. I'm telling you, that can bring jealousy between you and God. You can be completely disconnected from God by not spending quality time. I want us to pray. Whatsoever has become an idol, whatsoever has replaced my hunger and thirst for God, Lord, remove them. Remove them. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, I make a demand of God. Whatsoever has become, whatsoever has replaced my hunger and thirst for you, Lord, remove them. 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 Whatsoever, whatsoever has become a new craving in my soul, be deleted. 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 In the name of Jesus, every idol or in the heart of God, whatsoever, whatsoever has replaced my hunger for God, has replaced my, my hunger for God, my hunger for holiness, my hunger for righteousness, my hunger for God, be deleted, be deleted, be deleted. Be deleted, 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 be deleted. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want us to pray and tell the Lord. Lord, increase my hunger, O oh God. Lord, increase my hunger, O oh God. You see, I've said this before. <laughs> if truly you are hungry for God and you want more of God, it will cost you. It will cost you. Have you seen a person who told their parents they want to become a medical doctor? It will cost you. It will cost you your sleep. It will cost you many things. When your whole family, the whole family, they are going to a party, and you know you have about 15 chapters to cover, and your exam is the next day, you can't go anywhere. It will cost you. <laughs> it will cost you. I said something on Tuesday. I said it recently again. Have you discerned the weight of your assignment? Have you discerned the weight of your assignment? <laughs> you see, if you know the weight of your... Look at the story of Jesus. At the age of 12, he already started preparing 18 years. Way, the assignment of 30 years. Because he knows, he knew the weight of the assignment. He knew the weight of the assignment. He started preparing at the age of 12. You see, let me tell you something. Why do you think the Bible revealed the age or the ages of many people? 
Now the Bible was telling us that Josiah was a king at the age of nine. Jesus started to learn. He was in the temple at the age of 12. These things is to challenge us. Is to challenge every one of us. I'm telling you that in this kingdom, there is no child. <laughs> Brethren, I want us to pray. Lord, increase my hunger. Increase my hunger. Increase my thirst, oh God. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, increase my hunger. Increase my thirst. 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 Increase my hunger. Increase, Lord. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Let's look at Isaiah 63 as I began to wrap, wrap up my session. Isaiah 63, Isaiah 63, 63, from verse 1 and 2. The book of Isaiah 63, 1 and 2. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. It's Psalm 63, not Isaiah. I'm so sorry. Psalm 63 from verse 1 and 2. Psalm 63, I read, O oh God, thou art my God, early will I seek thee. My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh long gets for thee in a dry and thirsty land. We know what I is. What does that mean? It means one of the key factors of a man who is thirsty. That man is only seeking. Remember, I said something when we started this teaching that one of the significance of a person who is really, even in the physical, a person who is really thirsty for water or thirsty for something, they are very desperate. They will, they will, you will see, they become very violent, very focused, focus driven, thirsty for something. Thirsty. Go and check even the animals. When they are thirsty, they are hungry. They become very focused, very strategic. Very strategic. Brethren, verse 1 says, My God, early will I seek thee. I want us to pray. Lord, help me to seek you early. <laughs> oh my God. There's a Bible verse that says, Seek ye the Lord when you can find him. I said it in another way when we started tonight. I said, pray now. Fast now. Do all you can now. There's nothing wrong in going on vacation. There's nothing wrong in eating out. There's nothing wrong in spending time going to the movies. But invest more in what is most important. Invest more on what is most important. Ah. <laughs> Brethren, a time will come a time will come when if one does not do what is needful, and that is why I kept using the word from the beginning of this teaching, discern your season. What season are you now? Discern your season. What season are you? Have you discovered your assignment? If you have discovered the assignment, what have you started? What, have you, what are you doing with that assignment? Have you started building? Have you started working on that assignment? Have you started running? Have you gotten the blueprint? Have you gotten the strategy from God? God, where are you sending me? What do you want me to do with my life? What is your plan for my life? What is your plan for me? I said something on Tuesday. Now, we are supposed to be prepared for 2024. Don't wait until December. Lord, the prayer point, 
Lord, help me to seek thee. Lord, please help me to seek thee. Lord, please help me to seek thee, Eli. Help me to seek you, Eli. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, help me to seek you, Eli. 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 Help me, O oh God. Help my children. Help Fred and Josiah to seek you, Eli. To seek you, Eli. Help my wife to seek you, Eli. Help my children to seek you, Eli. Lord, help them, Lord. Lord, help them, Lord. Lord, help them, Lord. Help me, O oh God. Help me, O oh God. To seek you early, to seek you early, to seek you early, to seek you early. Help me, Lord. 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 To seek you early, to seek you early. To seek you early, to seek you early, to seek you early, to seek you early, to seek you early. Help me, O oh God. 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Brethren, I've said this before. If you are a worker here, an adventure you serve at one capacity, maybe an usher, you serve in the media, you serve in the choir, you serve in the protocol, you serve at one capacity. I'm saying this, what I'm saying now, or what I'm about to say, I'm addressing the global, not just you, because some people are going to watch this um, recording on YouTube. Brethren, I've realized in my own research, in my own observation, most workers, most workers don't really have a secret place. Most workers, most people who serve in the vineyard don't have a secret place. And it's very dangerous. Please, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, I beg you, don't let your secret place die. Don't let your secret place be empty. Let me tell you what Jesus, God told me. Holy Spirit told me this. Sister Kenneth, please get prepared. I'm going to round up in three minutes. Holy Spirit told me this. After the Garden of the Eagles in the month of June or July, I had it clearly. I was driving home that night. He says, my son, and you see, when they speak to me, sometimes they speak to me with imagination, with image. My eyes are open, but they will be showing me images. While I was driving home, Holy Spirit said, you see, this is the verse where your prayer goes into. He said, the day your altar lacks sacrifice, you begin to lose relevance. <laughs> I'm going to repeat it again. The day your life lacks, you see, that is why the easiest way, the easiest way to die, to lose relevance. There are many people, I'm sorry to say this, I'm not trying, I'm not saying this to, to beat people down. Many people have lost relevance because of comfortability. You, you want to live a comfortable life. You want to live a life of enjoyment. This thing has their consequences. That's why, you see, the more God lifts you, the more he will demand from you. The more he lifts you, the more he will place more demand. Because if he doesn't place that demand, those things, will, he, will kill the, he will kill the old treasure within you. He said, the day your altar lacks sacrifice, I know the sacrifice. Fasting, prayer, consecration, the sacred place. If, it, if we don't see it on this altar, you are gone. You are gone. Brethren, I'm begging you. I'm begging you. Don't let your altar. Even in the book of, I believe, Deuteronomy or Exodus, he said, said, don't let this, this fire lack wood. This fire, the wood more. If you, if you and I will keep burning for God, there must be fire and wood. You must find the flame. Fan it so that the fire doesn't go out. Because you see, when the Holy Ghost come, you see, the way the Holy Ghost came in the upper room, there was thunder, there was there was wind. But you see, when the Holy Ghost, when he wants to leave, he just, he, he, he goes quietly. When the Holy Ghost left Samson, he didn't know. 
when the spirit left him, he didn't know. Please, I'm begging you. A man can be prophesying, prophesying, speaking, doing the will of God, yet the spirit is gone. And remember where we said last week, we said, will you be sick in your name? The name is still working. Science and wonder is still happening. Yet, Jesus is gone. Jesus is outside looking at him. The Holy Ghost is outside looking at him. Yet, he's seeing signs and wonders. Ah. Let me give you this last prayer as our speaker get ready. Verse, verse 8 of Psalm, Psalm 63. He says, my soul followeth hard. My soul follow my soul. When I saw this, this is my first time, my first time saying this verse. First time. He said, My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand opposeth me. Two in one. Lord, let my soul follow. Run after thee hard. Let my soul follow you hard. My soul, you see, if your soul doesn't follow Jesus' hand, you'll be following something else. The devil will, will put something else in your heart to lead you like a GPS. Lord, let my soul run after thee. Let my soul, let my soul follow hard after thee. And uphold me, O God. Uphold me, O God. Prayer in the name of Jesus. My Lord and my God, let my soul, my soul, my soul, my soul, O oh God, follow hard after thee. Let my soul, the soul of our children, follow hard after thee. Follow hard after thee. Follow hard after thee. Uphold me with your right hand of righteousness. Uphold our children, O oh God. 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 Let my soul follow hard after thee. 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 Let my soul follow you. Let my soul follow hard. Very hard after thee. Let my soul run after thee, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Just to turn over to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, thank you for the privilege. Hi, everyone. I want to believe we are all doing well. How is our job, school, everything? Yeah, so I'm just going to say a short prayer and then get to this. However, my Father, I would thank you because you are faithful and you are true. You are good. You are kind. We thank you because you are faithful. You are merciful. We say be thou exalted, O God, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the first session. Thank you for what you have taught us. We ask, O Lord God, as we're about to hear your word, it will not be my word, it will be your word, and it will come alive in our hearts. Your word will become flesh in the name of Jesus. I come against every attack of the enemy to steal the words from the heart of your people. Help us, O God, to take this word and run with it. Help us, so Lord, to be ready and willing to learn at your feet. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Pray in Jesus' name. Pray. All right, so um, the topic that I have is... um. Is it possible for you to show your face? <laughs> I'm just beat up, that's why. I'm just tired. Okay. It's okay. Okay. Yes, so the topic that I have is um, pollution. Pollution, um, the definition that I have here, sincerely, I just read the definition of my head because I, I just was, anyway, is um, introducing a contaminant or a harmful substance to an environment. So that's what I wrote. If you guys can hear me, let me know. It just the way I feel. That's why I'm very low in my voice. We can hear you. Um, oh, okay. So um, pollution means that introducing a contaminant, a harmful substance to an environment or to a place. Then later on, as I was 
trying to prepare, I found in a place where they said uh, pollution means defilement. So I'm going to jump quickly. Can we open our Bible to <clears throat> Mark chapter 7 from verse 20 to 23 because of our time? Initially, I read, it, I read it from verse 1 to 23, but because of our time, I'm just going to go to 20 to 23. Mark 7, 20 to 23. Anyone that is there, please help me out. Mark 7, 20 to 23. Um, and, he said, and he said, that which cometh out of the man, that defileth the man, for from within, out of the heart of men, Proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, theft, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lavishness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Thank you. All right, so I realize that <laughs> I'm going to paraphrase the from verse one down and if i see a place we need to read then i'll point it out so um the pharisees and the said the scribes or sadducees they came to they okay they saw like jesus disciples like maybe one of them that was eating and didn't wash his hand and so because the pharisees they have like strict rules you know traditions and they always want to do things like you know how you have the set on stone this is how we do it this is how it has to be done this and that this and that so they were concerned and they went to jesus if you have your bible with you can we look at um that verse five to seven please from verse five to seven then the pharisees, then the pharisees go ahead go ahead then the pharisees and the scribe asked him why walk not the disciples according to the tradition of the elders but eat bread with unwashing hands. He answered and said unto them, Well, at Isaiah's prophesied, which is prophet Isaiah, prophesied of the hypocrite, as it is written, These people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. How be it, in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandment of men. Can I be honest with you guys? <laughs> Tonight's message, I don't know how it's going to go. I can show you my notes. I don't know how it's going to go. For a long time, anytime that I will say, come and do this, sometimes I'll have like seven pages, eight pages, 20 pages, whatever sometimes, even though I never go through all of them. But today, let me show you my notes if you can see it. My note is very scanty. Look at it. It's just Bible scriptures. That's why I said, I don't know how tonight is going to go. I don't know what the Spirit wants to do. But again, let his will be done. So the topic, while I was trying to prepare, because I wasn't sure what my topic was going to be, but I just went like in a very short sleep. And in that short sleep, it was that like somebody was pouring water in the bottle. And while they were pouring the water in the bottle, somebody was trying to introduce dirt into that water and then the person that was standing with me said to me pollution so and I quickly opened my eyes and then I just started trying to draft and trust me this time I'm talking about that's like what like past eight and we started this program at nine so past eight so again like I said I don't know it's going to go but I'm just going to speak as what the Lord had laid in my heart during that short period of time Okay, so um, Jesus was trying to tell us here that a lot of us, we do eye service in the sense that God is not happy with what we do, how we live our lives in the sense that our heart is far from God. Our mouth is worshiping God. Our, you know, the things we do on the physical, what people see, the objective things that people see, people can measure those things look like we are, we are we are aligning with God, that we are on the same page with God. But the one that searches the heart, the ones that you cannot hide from, 
you know, in David saying, Sam, where can I go from you? Even if we go in the head, in the water, anywhere, God is there. The one that looked through our heart is telling us tonight that they worship me in vain. He say, in vain they worship me because why their heart is far from me. So I think tonight what God is saying is, look deep. Where are you? In the radar of heaven, and heaven is searching and looking. Where are you? Are you, is your heart panting after God, the way Brad was saying earlier? You know, you and I have to look deep and search ourselves. Have I left the train? You know, this journey, this Christian race, is a, it's a continuous thing, it's a daily basis thing. And it's very easy from my tiny little work with God. I realized that it's very easy to backslide. I'm not lying. It starts small, small. It's not going to hit you so hard once. It's going to be small, 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 you know. But I want us to just look deep and just see ourselves and say, what is coming out of my heart? Jesus said to them, it's not about the tradition, all the things you have laid down, all the rules and regulation it has to be like this. This has to be done. That is defiling you. That is making you smell in the nose of heaven. You're asking God, God, empower me, refresh me, revive me. But it's looking at you like you're thinking, what is going on with you? It's not what you are, um, the rules and regulations is the thing coming out of your heart, what is coming out of your mouth. And as I was trying to prepare this, the Spirit took me to James, James chapter three. Please let's go there. I mean, I have a few Bible verses, but I feel like that James chapter three was the one that really like, it really pressed so much on my heart. Please let's go to James chapter three. If I have time, I'll go to the rest of them, but if not, let God be glorified. Um, James chapter 3. James chapter 3, please. That will... Verse. Just read everything from verse 1, please. My brethren, be not many, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in the world, the same is a perfect man, an able also to breed the whole body. Behold, we put bit in the horse's mouth that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body. Behold, also the sheep which though they be so great are, and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turn about with a very small hem Whithersoever the governor listed, even so the tongue is a little member and boasted great things. Behold, how great a master a little fire kindled, and the tongue is a fire, a word of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that is defileth the whole body and setteth on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell, for every kind of beast and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and has been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Here with bless, here with bless with God, even the Father, here with curse with men, women which are made after the similitude of God, out of the same mouth proceeded blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so, that a fountain sent forth at the same place, sweet water and bitter, can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs, so can no fountain both yield salt, water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye are bitter, envy, and strive in your heart, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descended not from above, but it, it but is earthly, sensual, devilish. 
For where envying and strife is, there is confusion and every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Praise the Lord. You know, God is trying to talk. Thank you, Beta. I know it's long, but if we all have time at home, we can just read that James chapter 3 again. I'm using, um, what's it called? Uh, message Bible. I'm using the laptop. The Message Bible. The verse 1 says, don't be in any rush to become a teacher, my friends. Teaching is highly responsible work. You know, teachers are held to the strictest standard. And what I was just trying to say to us is, as children of God, you know, our tongue, you know, Bible, Bible tells us that our mouth, there's life and death in our mouth. You know, and as children of God, we, we correct people or we teach other people. We are held in higher standard. Even though, you know, like, for example, now when you teach a child to do something, it's like, uh, let's say, like, a, let me say, a older child and a smaller child. If two of them do something wrong, you will tend to talk more to the older one because we expect more from that older one and that's the way it is it says that because we are teachers we are held in higher standard and it says that if there's any one that you find that when they talk and they don't make any mistake that person is perfect but again as small as our tongue is the bible says that it can set the whole place on fire you understand and I'm trying to jump this year and there, year and there, you know, but it says that it only takes a spark. Remember to set off a forest fire, a careless and wrongly placed word out of your mouth can do that. By our speech, we can ruin the world, turn harmony to chaos, throw mud on a reputation, send the whole world up in a smoke and go up in smoke with it, smoke right from the pit of hell, you know, that is to say, Everything that comes out of our heart. The Bible says, as a man thinketh, and is that so easy? The things that we say from our mouth, we've processed them, we've thought about them. These things defile us when we say wrong things as children of God. You know, God is concerned, you know, more about those things that we are doing that is defiling or that is messing up our garments. I'm sure on this platform we talked about garments like few times. You know, look at Joshua the high priest. He, he had a filthy garment, even though he was still serving in the house of God. So God is reaching out to us today. Like you cannot use the same mouth that you used to call God and bless and do all that, and use that same mouth to curse, because those things will defile you. Those things will defile me. Those things will make us look like when God look at us, he's not happy. When God is seeing us, he's looking at the wrong way we are using our mouth. If we are backbiting, if we are saying things, you know, just using our mouth the wrong way. You know, sometimes it might be like, yeah, but it's my mouth. I can say whatever I want to say. No, the moment you give your life to Christ, you die you die you're no longer of yourself that thing is in second corinthians i can't remember right now where that um bible verses it says that once you give your life to christ you die you're no longer your own you are no longer i am no longer my own when the holy spirit is living inside of us the bible says our body is the temple of god we cannot just do anyhow anymore and that is why we are held in higher standard and that is why we are held accountable jesus looked at them and said and said to the pharisees in that mark that we read in um let me read verse 20 he said what comes out of a man that defiles a man for with is from within out of the acts of men proceed evil evil thoughts adulteries fornications murderers all these things theft conversiousness wickedness deceit lewdness and evil eye blasphemy pride foolishness 
all these evil things come from within and defile a man. If you and I are found in any of this category, or if you feel like you are not sure, if you are doing any of them, you see one thing that I always do, that I always encourage believers to do, I didn't know it before, the Holy Spirit taught me, is to take spiritual inventory of yourself every time. Do it maybe once a month or even every day. Holy Spirit, search me true and true. Holy Spirit, is there still any iniquity in me? Is there anything found in my life that will hinder me from fellowshipping with you? Is there anything that will make me, you know, grief you or grief God? You know, find me, search me. And let me tell you, God loves it when we are sincere. God loves it when we are ready for correction. You know, the Bible I would say that he, the father I love is chastised it, you know, and he says that his correction are not grievous. You understand? And God is saying to us today, I'm not happy when you guys just, you, your heart, what you process in your heart, even when you have not slept with somebody, but you already thought about it in your heart, God is not happy about it. You know, he's, he's reaching out to us tonight and saying to us, I want you to dig deep. I want us to run quickly. Can we quickly see Ephesians 4, 29 to 30, please? If you are there, please help me. Ephesians 4, 29 to 30. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Please, my dear brother and sister, if there's anything that God is warning us tonight, please, you see, if you look at that, that um, place very well, it says that, we should watch our mouth. Be careful what comes out of your mouth. The Holy Spirit is living inside of you. You don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, you know. If me, personally, I'm always afraid, like, to say, God, I don't want to lose the Holy Spirit. Because I feel like once you take Holy Spirit from a man, the man is dead. It's like fish out of water. You just, that's it. You can't get direction. You can't get life. Because that's where you get life, you know. So I personally, I always encourage anyone when I have the privilege to, please do everything within your means. You know, God cannot do everything for us. We have to meet God too and do some parts. You know, try to say to yourself every day once you wake up, Holy Spirit, help me. Holy Spirit, help me. Help me to use my mouth the right way. Help me to live the right way. Help me to not just talk the way my mouth just wants to talk. Like control my tongue, control my mouth. You know, the Holy Spirit taught me, you say I'm your restrainer. And I can't even tell you guys the whole thing, the story that led to that encounter when he said that thing to me, that I'm your restrainer. I want us to pray to God, even if it's for one second. I want you to pray to God and say, restrain me, Holy Spirit. Anything that I will do that will grieve you, that will make you go away. Because those things, the Bible records them as defilement. You know, anything that is coming from our, our hearts, our thoughts, you know, now I'm not talking about only when we gossip or when we backbite or when we slander people or when we curse people out or when we are rude or when we call people name. Not only that, but when we are stubborn, when we are rebellious, when we are, you know, everything that is in that, that um, what's it called? Mark chapter, Mark chapter, what did we read? Seven, you know, 20 to 23. Jesus was stating all these things there, you know. That God, anything in my life, Holy Spirit, that will make me grieve the Holy Spirit. Jesus, please take it out of my life. Please, I want us to pray. That God, take it out of my life. Cleanse me. Purge me. Purify me, oh God. Anything in my life that is hiding, that the enemy has programmed in my life to destroy me, to destroy my destiny, to destroy my assignment, to hinder me from being who you want me to be. Holy Spirit, please remove those things from my life. I surrender it all to you at the cross tonight. 
tonight. I ask for your mercy. I ask that you please, oh Lord, forgive me and purge me. Cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus and take those things out of my life. In Jesus' name we pray. This is the prayer that you have to continue again on your own at home. You know what I mean? These are daily prayers that we have to pray. You know, I want us to see um, 19, Psalm 19 verse 14, please. Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of thy mouth and the meditation of my, of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength mm -hmm. and my redeemer. Let the words of my, my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable. So all these things, you know, let us ask ourselves and look inward. The things I think of, are they acceptable before God? The words that come out of my mouth, even on social media, you, are, you might not be talking, but you are typing those things. Those things are coming, stemming out of your heart, even though you don't say them. Sometimes the communication you are making is um, body language communication. Are they sinful? Are they lustful? You know, God is watching us. He's looking at us. You know, I, I want us to, to, what do you say? Like look inward and ask yourself, the way I'm living my life, what I'm doing, am I defiling myself daily? Am I eating the king's meal unconsciously? Because sometimes Instagram will feed you rubbish. And if you take it in, you will feed yourself with those things and defile yourself, you know, and you, you, you will now start thinking things you don't, you don't want to think of, you know, start behaving the way you don't want to behave, saying things you don't want to say. You know, I want us to look at what do we do? Where do we go? Where are the places we go? You know, that lead us to committing sin or that lead us to, or what do we say? Do we sow seed of discord amongst ourselves? Like say something to this person and what you say to that person, you go and say it to another person and all these things. And you start to brew, you know, bad things. If somebody is talking bad about another person to you, are you quick to shut it down to say, oh, please, my brother, my sister, just leave it the way it is, you know, like God will have his way, you know, like just try and fix it. Don't put fire. Don't, don't, don't try to make it worse than what the situation is already. You know, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. I want us to look again to Matthew chapter 12, Matthew 12, 33 to 37. Matthew 12, 33 to 37. That was, sorry, I'm disturbing you too much tonight. Matthew 12. 33 to 37. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and its fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by its fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man, out of the good treasure, of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For mm -hmm. by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. See, this verse, you know, it says generation of vipers. The first person that I saw that used that word was John the Baptist. John the Baptist used that word. Um, he was, you know, trying to um, prepare the way for the Lord Jesus and baptizing people and preaching that Christ is come and what's it called? The kingdom of God is at hand, they should repent and all that. And these people came, the, the Pharisees, all these people. And the Bible recorded that when they came, he said to them that who advised you to come? Who told you to come? You know, you want to come and trend because it's trending. You see that people are doing this, people are baptizing you too. You want to baptize. When are you going to get transformed? You know, 
John the Baptist was trying to tell them, he said it the way it is, and that is what is lacking in the body of Christ. A lot of people don't want to say the word of God the way it is. They want to water it down and polish it and don't want to hurt people's feelings. But at the end of the day, you are not helping them. You know, um, there's this prophet tell Tiffany or something. I don't know. You guys know. Everybody know her. She's on Instagram. She's everywhere. This um, African-American prophetess. You know, she said one illustration one day that I saw. And I like that illustration. She said that if a child is crossing the road, a small child, and a car is coming, are you going to just say, oh, Johnny, come back here. Don't, you know. Or you're going to yank that child off the street and say, hey, Johnny, come here, come here. Why? He said, you have to say the truth. Hellfire is real. And it's the truth, guys. Hellfire is real. When the word of God comes to us, like right now, I am picking my own. Whatever I know I'm doing that is not right, that I'm seeing from the scripture, I'm picking it too. I'm going back in my closet and saying, Jesus, save me. Don't let me go to hellfire. I've given my life to Christ, I know. But with all these things that I still do, save me, deliver me so I can be who you want me to be. You know, a lot of lives are attached to your life and my life. And if we fail, if we fail, again, I'm going to repeat this because this thing is like a stern warning. The Holy Spirit told me, and I didn't get the time to pen down the verse, but I did have the word down. It said, if you fail to, to transform your mind, renew your mind to be who God has called you to be, because the word of God keep coming every time. But sometimes we want to be um, hard headed. We know we, we just want to be like, oh, it's not me. The word is not for me. It's for so so and so. You know, it says, if a fruitless tree, this is the one. It is the word now that I, I heard. It say, if you're a fruitless tree, that tree is going to be cut down. If that person is not fruitful, because there's season and time to everything, if the master, if Adonai come to you when it's your season to function, to be who God has called you to be, and you are not there and I'm not there doing what we are supposed to do, that person is going to be cut down. That person is going to be replaced. I do not want to be replaced. I mean, this assignment, this life that God has given us is a privilege to be called into the fold. And so if we refuse to be cooked, allow the Holy Spirit to work on us, to be to be refined with the refiner's fire of the Holy Ghost, you know, for the Holy Ghost to purge us, cleanse us, purify us, destroy, dismantle. Let me tell you, Jesus, it's not easy to go to, to fulfill your assignment. Jesus had to go through this squeezing at Gethsemane. He had to go to that Gethsemane and do that final squeezing. You know, he pained him so much. You know, he looked, he cried and said, that God, like, Father, can't this cup just pass over me? Do I have to go through this squeezing? You need to look up what Gethsemane is. It's a place where they squeeze you know, stuff to bring oil out of it. And Jesus, for him to bring out that greatness in him, in order for him to fulfill his destiny, in order for him to be who God, has, what God has written of him, for him to fulfill it, he had to go into that garden. It's a garden where they do that squeezing, that gets money. He had to go there and he needed assistant. He, he told the disciple, please watch with me, pray with me. They were sleeping. Why? Because... The assignment is not them that are doing the assignment. So the thing is not, you know, if you are the one that as a leader, for example, it's hard to, to be a leader because to be a leader, you there's so much that is going to be happening back and forth around you. And I believe that everyone on this platform, I've said this before, you know, by the leading of the Holy Spirit, that everyone on this platform, you were unpicked. You might think that somebody just invited you. Let me tell you, you are not here by accident. You were unpicked because you are being pruned and true for your season and you're going to be a leader one day you know and there are times that as a leader you will be squeezed you you will really be squeezed in order for you to fulfill your purpose or fulfill your destiny please i beg you again tonight jesus it wasn't easy for him but he took the shame he took the pain he took the sin all the sin of the world that he had never he had never known sin all his life this this person is pure he's clean he's righteous and he took all the pain he took sickness diabetes he took cancer he took all these things 
family problem, household uh, causes. He took all these things. He looked at it and looked at the father and said, God, I, I have to drink this cup for real. Like, for real, I have to. And God is telling him, I I'm sorry, my son, you know, that's the deal, you know. And he went through it just for you and I. He has paid the price. He has, he has um, how do you say, justified us with his blood, you know. One of my mentors, Benny, and he said something. He said that justification is when God is giving you his righteousness. Sanctification is when you and I are walking towards attaining that righteousness. You know, I don't know if you understand. Justification is gotten through what Jesus has done for us. You know, he gave an example. He said, if you call it somebody now like a baby, you give birth to a baby. You'll be saying, yeah, that's my child, that's my child. The child doesn't even know that that's your, his father or mother. But, you know, you keep telling, that's my baby, that's my baby. But as the baby grow older, the baby will start recognizing that those are the parents. And the baby will start, you know, conforming and, you know, aligning to understanding that these are my parents. That is what sanctification is. We have to start aligning and, you know, bringing ourselves into... Um, that holiness, you know, into what God has called us righteous, you know. So please, the word of God is coming out to us today that a fruitless tree, if we are not fruitful, if we are not being who God has called us to be, there is always replacement. There are a lot of people God is preparing in the desert. There are people God is preparing. You don't want your assignment to be given to someone else. You don't want for God to say, okay, time up. Let's call him home. He's not doing what he's doing. Jesus went to a, a tree, fig tree. I'm sure we know the story. And he wanted to take, uh, what's it called, um, fruits from the tree. He couldn't find anything. Please, I, I just need somebody to answer me. Anybody, what did Jesus do? How was his reaction? Was he happy? What did he do to that fig tree? Please, anybody, anybody, please. What did it Jesus caused, do to the it tree? Caused, it caused the tree. Please, you don't want to be cursed. What I just told you right now was, it's not in my note, though. I can show you my notes, but it's what I heard the Holy Spirit say to me just now. Jesus cursed the tree. That is to say, when the master comes to you, it's a season that telling a child, okay, the child dirty themselves. You wash them, you clean them. They go and dirty again. You wash and clean them. After a while, you're just going to be like, you know what? I expect more from you at this stage. Uh, you are now big. You are, you are eating this. I'll be feeding you this. They expect more from you and I. You understand? So I want us to, to cry to God today. You know, if you, if, you, if you say to yourself, okay, I agree, Sister Kenny, that I do this. Don't acknowledge it to me. Oh, sorry. I take that back. Say it to God, please, 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 please. I'm sorry, it's not me. Say it to God. So when you acknowledge in your heart that you have sinned, because the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, you know, and the same thing, you know, when we say someone comes short of the glory of God, you don't want to come short of God's glory. You understand? Because sin brings death. Unfruitfulness will cause cutting down. Unfruitfulness will bring causes. You understand? And if you have time, go and read that Matthew chapter 3. That Matthew chapter 3 will tell you, you know, the, the behavior of, of people that are vipers. They are corny. They are deceitful. Vipers are like snakes. They are like serpents. You understand? They, they, are, they, are, they are very corny. They, they, are, they don't align. They don't do things straight. They are just all over the place. They are hypocrites. You know, you are one way in the church. You are one way in the house. God is watching you. God's eye is following you. God's eye is following me. God's eye is watching us. And what he's saying to us tonight is, please, this one I have to, please show it to us, please. First Peter 3, verse 10. If I don't say anything else, First Peter 3, verse 10, please, we're tired of First Peter 3, 10. First Peter 3, 10 says, for he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips hmm. that they speak no guile. If you love life and you want good days, 
keep your mouth and whatever come out of your mouth come from your heart if you want to have a good relationship with god god bible says who can ascend to the hill of the lord he that has a clean hands and a pure heart so if you are not seeing unforgiveness, bitterness, strife, tension, all these things in your heart, tonight I want you to go to your master. Go back to God and say, Lord, have mercy on me. If you find it difficult to even make amend with whoever it is or wherever I mean, I don't know, you know, talk to the Holy Spirit. I want you to, to see the Holy Spirit as your helper. Jesus said he will send us a comforter. He will send us somebody to help us. And that is the Holy Spirit. A lot of believers don't understand the office of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people just hear Holy Spirit, but they don't maximize the use or acknowledgement of this sweet Holy Spirit. You know, is all you need. Is There's a song that says, you're all I need. You're all I need some something like that. I can't, I don't want to go because time is going. Please, you need that Holy Spirit to want this Christian race to live a holy life to please God. To please God. In James 3, we were reading that it's hard to not commit sin with our mouth. It's very hard. But if you can bridle your tongue, if you can watch what you're thinking in your heart, ah, that person is a perfect person. And so every day. Bible, we remember, we learned last week, he said, walk before me, I am the almighty God, walk before me and be that perfect. The only way to do this is go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, that says that our body is the temple of God, we should renew our mind, renew your mind, ask the only, because God is, he cares about this heart, he, because if you don't have love in your heart, how will you be able to preach to others? Because it's out of love you can preach. It's out of love you can pray with somebody. It's out of love you can give your time to serve God. It's out of love you can give your time to do the things of God. When you when you are committing uh, fornication, when you are doing all these things, it's not love because you don't even love yourself. You don't love yourself. When you, when you love yourself, you will not commit fornication because every time you do those things, you open yourself up for demonic spirits to enter you. Whatever spirits that brother or that sister is carrying, it will enter you. If they have dated or slept with 15 people and you join your own, they will have those demons from those 15 people into you. Why are you doing that to yourself? Why? It's just kissing. It's just kissing. Okay, but... Are you even aware? Let's do spiritual now. Are you aware that there is um this um disease that you can get from kissing? The the what the the um the medical name is leaving my head right now. But do you know? Because a lot of things that we do that the Bible say don't do this, do this, do this. The Bible is not just full of rules and all that, but it's for our own good. You understand? But the focus, the point is God wants us to make our hearts right. You cannot ascend the hill of the Lord if your heart is not right before God. And that is why Jesus was saying to them, he said that they are hypocrites. Please, what is that place again? Mark, Mark chapter 7, Abby. Mark chapter 7, I think it was verse 7. Mark chapter 7, let me see. Verse, verse 7, he said, these people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain, in vain, they worship me. So all the 20 hours of prayer, all the 10 hours of fasting, all the everything is waste. Is waste. Is waste. I pray that the Lord will help us to have better understanding. You know, there are times... Again, that, that thing, the Holy Spirit is reminding me again to emphasize it, that you should pray the Holy Spirit to restrain you when you want to do evil. It's reminding me right now, because I said it earlier, and it's bringing it back to me, that every day we should ask him, restrain me, hold me from doing evil, from putting your name to shame. Restrain me. What I will do that will disgrace the body of Christ what I would do that would disgrace the name of Jesus, people that I've preached to, that I've said this and that to, and then I will now do something. I'm not saying that I'm perfect or you are perfect, but that is why we need the Holy Spirit to help us and abide. John 15, 5, he said that he is the vine, we are the branches. See, the day that I got that revelation like this, it was as if there was a light bulb in my head. 
I'm telling you. It's like I just... It just made this Christian journey a lot easier for me. I realized that, okay, once I just abide, I am the branch, is the vine. Once I just connect like this, eh, eh, that's it. I'm just going to be abiding. It's not going to be easy some days. You know, when the Holy Spirit wake you up in the midnight, pray or read the Bible or intercede for somebody and you are very tired, you've gone to school, you've gone to work, you are beat up. There are days that like that, that you just feel like, ah, Holy Spirit, what is it today? I'm tired. You know, there are days like that. But... Just ask for grace. God help me. Holy Spirit help me. Help me. Help me. And just even if you are just mumbling the words little by little, as you obey, the strength will come. As we obey, the strength will come. It's already eleven o'clock. I mean, I don't want to overflow this, but the heart of God to us is for us to go and search our hearts. What we are doing in the house of God? Are we wasting our time? Are we wasting our time? The words coming our, out of our mouth. Are we defiled? Are we stained in our garments already? Have we stained our garments? If we, you and I have stained our garment, let's go to God in our secret place, in your house, in your car, wherever you are, and open your mouth and say, God, forgive me. Have mercy on me. Invite the Holy Spirit back into your hearts. Holy Spirit, in any way I've grieved you and you're just not talking to me the way you used to before, showing me things the way you used to before, or my prayer out, I'm not praying well the way I used to do before, have mercy on me. And then one more prayer, you're going to add to that prayer before you sleep tonight. I just heard it. It say, oh Lord, ignite my life with your Holy Ghost fire. Write it down if you have to write it down. That prayer just came right now. Ignite my life with your Holy Ghost fire. Because when there is fire, that fire will burn everything I know of God in your life. It will help you live a holy life. It will help you please God. You know, when your ways are right with God, even your enemies, they won't be able to do anything to you. You know, there's a Bible verse that says that um, the rod of the wicked, do you, listen, the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hand into iniquity. When you put your hand into iniquity, you will give room to the enemy to put their rod on you. Please, please. A word is enough for the wise. This is all I got. I mean, I, I try, try, try. Holy Spirit, talk to me. What's the word for tonight? And he gave me the word just like past eight, past eight. And I didn't even know what I was going to say. But again, this is what is trying to say to us. Even me, I have to go and listen to it again to know whatever I, I just said, because I didn't even know anything I said right now. But please, I ask that God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, Mr. Kenny. God bless you. Um, I pray the Lord will continue to strengthen in Jesus' name. And I pray the Lord will help every one of us, you know, um, to stand right, to live right, to accomplish God's plan and purpose for our lives. We won't be caught down in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us. The Lord will help us. You know, just like she has said, please, I encourage every one of us, please. You know, God is a God of mercy. I said something on Saturday. I said God is even more important. God is more desperate to have intimacy with us than we are hungry for him. The biggest challenges I have right now is time. You know, time. If I tell you the things I'm supposed to do now, if I leave this prayer right now, you know. So that's why I kept encouraging you guys. If you are single, you are not married, do all you can now with your time. Invest. I'm telling you, don't be a kind of person who sleep eight hours. Sleep every little thing you are tired. Every small thing you are tired. No, something is wrong. Something is wrong. You shouldn't be feeling it. I'm not, I'm not talking about people that have health issue now. Please don't get me wrong. Health issue is different. But physically, there's no health issue. But you're always getting tired. No. You know, st stretch yourself. Stretch yourself. Invest. Read now. Go to the library. Buy books. Invest now. Invest now. See yourself bigger than where you are now. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we say thank you. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Lord, I decree, Lord, that you will visit us tonight in your mercy. You will visit us in our dreams. You have visited us already in words. 
through the word of the Lord. Lord, visit us physically in our dreams tonight. Visit us tonight, O oh God. I decree direction. I decree liberation in the name of Jesus. I decree liberation to every heart in the name of Jesus. I decree direction. I decree strength. I decree strength, strength to do the will of God, strength to live right, strength to take needful actions in the name of Jesus. Lord, encounter us tonight. Encounter us tonight. I cover everyone with the blood of Jesus. I decree open doors. I decree career open doors. I decree open doors. I decree financial breakthrough. I decree open heavens over everyone here tonight. I decree this month you will have your testimonies. Your testimonies are released in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree you are preserved and protected. Your families are preserved and protected. In the name of Jesus, I decree, let that siblings of yours be back home, be back home, be back home. Let your sibling return home. I decree, let what the enemy has stolen be restored. Let what the enemy has stolen be restored. In the name of Jesus, I decree expansion. Expansion. Begin to see yourself exactly the way God sees you. In the name of Jesus, Father, let your name alone be exalted. I disconnect you from evil sources. I disconnect from wrong association. I disconnect you from wrong thoughts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Have a wonderful weekend. Please spend your time. Invest it. Don't spend it. Invest your time and the Lord will help you. God bless you. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Bye-bye. See you on Tuesday. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.